Hello and welcome along to the really rubbish racing V8 Australia Cars Championship here down under at Melbourne at Albert Park. A legendary circuit on the Formula One calendar and a legendary circuit also for the V8 Australia Cars Championship. I'm joined by Campbell Wallace with Nick on his holidays once again. Uh, so Campbell, a pleasure to have you along. It's nice to be back, yes. Certainly so. So 30 minutes of the first race and the 30 minutes for the second race as well. The 30-30 split we've got here, 16 turns in total for the circuit, a length of 3.3 miles over 16 laps, a 30-minute race duration. Uh, with just 17 cars, one of the smaller grids taking to the field, uh, but needless to say, given the tightness of the circuit, we're expecting action aplenty throughout the field, Campbell. We certainly are. It's one of the longer laps, nearly two minute lap times, but uh, the racing has proved good no matter the length of the circuit, and here's the championship. So yes, Sam Harani leads the way, 135 points to Ollie Knight's 117 in the Junior Motorsports. April Dillon, a very distant third place, 70 points compared to James Price Harper, really making inroads into her now on 66, and Pete Walker and Alex O'Dell for the power team, a lowly fifth and sixth position. So uh, some very interesting championship standings, especially towards the top of the field. So there we are, looking at the cars coming through turn three. You're looking fairly stable. It's easy to lock the rears into there. Speaking of someone who was stable in the pole up, let's have a look at Sam Harali then. He said a 151.3, coming down the main straight in towards uh, turns one and two of Brabham and Jones. So down into second gear for the right hand at 18 miles an hour. And then towards the right hand side of the track for the exit. It's very... Very straightforward uh, turn one and two. This is the first really big braking point, turn three, to get all the way down into first gear. Not as soon as the old driver's doing that. Into the slippery turn four. You have to be careful not to run too wide. It is quite slippy out there. He goes a little wide. The fast turn five, flashing these cars just about, although if you get the line wrong, it might not be. Going in towards turn six, another big stop. Down to second gear. Make sure you get care. Don't run wide into the gravel, or else you'll be spun round. Uh, in the dry, this corner's flat and it is perfectly dry for this race, thankfully. Uh, down into turn 9 and 10, another chicane right left. And then coming on towards the interesting part of the lap, turns 11 and 12. Very interesting corners. Um, so he wanted exactly, so uh, a minor lift and perhaps a change down on the gearbox we'll see how Rani do. So flat out then, 145 miles an hour, changes down into third position, clips the apex on the left and then through the right hander as well, using all the Perfect. track, absolutely great line through there and then in towards the final part of the lap, down into turn 13 of the Scari then, spot the breaking point, the yellow marker on the, oh sorry, the orange marker on the left hand side of the screen, 68 miles an hour through there, up the box, into third once again and a minor lift through there taking a lot of curve on the inside that unsettles the car just a tad not going to compromise his time though is Harani into this very very difficult uh, left hander of Prost for turn 15 and then turn 16 rounds off the lap very difficult to get onto the power especially in these 600 horsepower monsters but Sam Harani negotiates things perfectly and will come across the line to take a 151 second pole lap very good lap there from Harani uh one minor mistake, he just got a bit too much curve towards the end of the lap, but otherwise he was very smooth, very fast, and uh, ultimate lap there, and very very fast. Uh, very few people thought we'd get uh, into the 151s at all, never mind as far into the 151s as we did, as we see the cars on their formation lap. Yep, managing to negotiate things absolutely perfectly. Like we say, not a cloud in the sky, well perhaps a few, um, but it's, it's uh, perfectly sunny out there, track conditions are as you would expect them to be. And I do love that camera shot as well. It's nice to see the cars going through there, even on their formation, like they're, they're doing 100 miles an hour. You just think when they are actually doing 100 miles an hour through the air, it'll be absolutely spectacular. We won't be able to keep up. On board then with Sam Harani, the pole sitter. We'll wait for the grid to come up and we'll talk you through that in just a couple of moments. His teammate, James Price Harper, uh, lining up in a well-deserved second place. The offenders once again locking out the front row of the grid. Lee Harrison there in a third position as well. So let's have a look then. Sam Harani takes pole as we saw the 151.3 lap. Price Harper in second, Harrison in third for the defenders, his end team's compatriot, and Pete Walker back up into fourth place. Tom Brooks, a great fifth place as well, 2.8 seconds off the pace still, uh, but his best grid position by far in the championship. Alex O'Dell was sixth. Neil Crawford, a great uh, grid slot for him in seventh with James Lambert in eighth. April Dillon finished ninth in the qualifying session. Campbell Wallace rounded out the top ten. Uh, Niall O'Connell was 11th for the Royal PSP Motorsports. Dan Thorne was 12th for the Independables. Greg
great showing from him. And then further back, Tom Kowalski in 13th, Dave Morley in 14th, uh, with Ben Haddleton in 15th, Rob Kobe for Howler Racing. He lines up in 16th position, some six seconds off the pace. And then Matt Davies, the final entrant for PSP Motorsports, 6.836 seconds off the pace and rounding out the grid slot here. Sort of standing start for this race as it is for the for half hour races and I think the lights are just about to come on. They are indeed, so three red lights, now four and five. Harani on the left, Price Harper. Oh, it's a jump start oh, from the back. From, uh, well, I think that might be Crawford or Wallace, one of the two PSP motorsports. Nilo Connell not managing to get away well. Needless to say, Harani streaks away at the front of the field, and Bryce Harper getting swallowed up by Lee Harrison. Also, Pete Walker looking to make a move. Bit of contact between the two. Bryce Harper off a turn one. Lee Harrison spinning round as well, and that's Pete Walker for the power team. Also off a great fourth position grid slot, but going to pot for him there as well. And also, Nilo Connell going into the back of him now. Bryce Harper seriously under pressure from James Lambert, who's looking around the outside into towards towards turn three, a very difficult corner, doesn't have the space to utilise it. Oh, some oh, bumping down the field. Certainly is, and there we are, see Alex O'Dell get very close behind Tom Brooks, spinning round now as well, into the right hand. Crawford Goodness in the background. Oh dear, oh dear, it's all kicking off in the midfield as well, so Brooks's race is run now by the looks of things, and Crawford spinning out as well, he had such a promising qualifying, uh, but things are going from bad to worse for the Kaibitsu racing driver. Having a look further back then, there's Tom Kowalski just going through the shots with one of the uh, Canadian tyre howler racing cars just ahead of him and then crossing further up James Lambert up to third, third position off the start of the grid that's a fantastic qualifying uh, and a fantastic launch off the start as well he's got Alex O'Dell for company yeah so an adventurous start several cars going round a lot of contact being made in the early corners and it's, it's wiped out the entire second row of the grid it's given Lambert and O'Dell a great chance of getting a podium here the well clear of the chasing pack which I think is led by Dan Thorne indeed it is and he's just going a little bit wide at turn 11 under huge pressure here from Wallace behind and eight Dylan I think behind there look at this three wide then on the straight coming down uh, towards turn 13 of Ascari not quite three wide now Wallace got the whole shot on Dan Thorne but Dan Thorne then are down to sixth place Wallace up into fifth great start there for the Kerbitsu driver the number 64 Dan Thorne though looking to get the position back he's certainly got some strong pace Dylan goes a bit wide out of turn 14 and he's got Tom Kowalski for company now as well who easily manages to negotiate his way around the outside and also Rob Covey her teammate uh, looking to get things done Kowalski uh, didn't manage to get the pass completed though as April Dylan spins oh. out of the final corner it's Rob Covey I, I apologise it's Covey it, yeah I think, I think it was Covey who was running with uh, foreign walls earlier on with another one who's come from the back kept out of trouble but uh, just losing us in the final corner which can be remarkably slippery Matt Davies also going off there he'll just uh, cut to the pit lane narrowly being missed by Harrison Walker and Brooks behind yeah, very close between these three. Further back, of course, drivers who all started towards the, ta the top end of the grid and now towards the tail end of the field. Lee Harrison, the driver who's lost the most amount of positions off the start, is uh, looking to be under attack from Tom Brooks now as well, who goes a bit wide into Turn 1. Let's have a look at a replay then. Watch this. Is this Lambert going deep into Turn 1? Indeed it is. And that allows... Ooh, and that puts Odell fast. Yes, it does. Straight up into third place then for Odell. Great overtake from him and taking advantage of when uh, Lambert makes a mistake. But the race leader then, Sam Harani, is comfortably out in front following the instance uh, further back behind him. Yeah, the two offenders' cars keeping themselves out of trouble. And I don't think that battle for turn three is over, though. Odell and o uh, Odell and Lambert have proved to be at roughly the same pace so far this season. And we're seeing them running very close in this lap. Oh, it's a brave move into the shape, and he thinks better of it. But there are chances. Corner immediately after the chicane is a definite overtake. Oh, and O'Dell went very time. wide under there and he's got a yeah. poor exit as well. So that allows Lambert to get past up into the podium position for the number 91. Is O'Dell going to try and launch another one up the inside into Ascari? No, thinks better of it. I think this prime opportunity to, uh, place to overtake will probably be onto the main straight. But needless to say, he's coming up into turn 14 side by side between the Tropico Motorsports and the Power Drivers. And they manages to keep things clean. No touches between them. But Lambert still manages to ca uh, carry on ahead the brakes glowing orange as these guys come around the right hander the final right hander and onto the main straight once again Odell got a superb exit out of there is he going to be able to utilize the slip stream there but on board with Odell at the moment as Harani pops the fastest lap of a 153.6 in and no he doesn't quite have the time to use it maybe it's turn three as uh, Lambert goes deep on the brakes and that allows Odell to get back up ahead so there we are exactly the same thing that Lambert did on the last lap and Odell comfortably slots back into the podium position once again. Odell seems much faster in the second half of the lap from Lambert. If you can just keep it clean, 
uh, once they're off the back straight, he should be able to pull out enough of a gap to keep uh, Lambert immediately at bay. Dan Thorne still under pressure from Cam Wallace and I believe that's Dylan behind, indeed it is. Uh, they'll be looking to make as much progress as possible, see if they can have any hope of catching the cars in front, but uh, they've already made some way up the road and... Dan Thorne now under pressure from Campbell Wallace in towards turn five then. Oh, not quite close enough. There is Wallace. Uh, needless to say, as Dan Thorne's pace is supreme as well. He's had a really rough start to the season. Uh, no point, oh sorry, two points on the board rather he has got, uh, but he has not managed to score anything other than that. Has retired pretty much at every round aside from that. So running up in fifth place, a great showing from the Independables driver and demonstrating that he most certainly has some pace uh, and can use it when needs be then. And that's Dylan then harassing Wallace now uh, for position then. They are on the straight. Um, Dylan is in Wallace's slipstream coming in towards turn 11 and 12. He's very much one at a time through there. It's a very Dan Dare move if you can launch one up the inside. Uh, maybe so. We'll have to wait and have a look at that. Ooh, we're just a little wide there. That may give Dylan a run as they go in towards turn 13. Let's have a look. So in the slipstream now, Wallace goes offensive and that doesn't allow Dylan to get past, but he's very close behind Dan Thorne. Bit of a tap between the two. Oh, contact there. And Dan Thorne goes spinning around the order. Needless to say, Wallace does the uh, decent thing, slows down and let Dan uh, lets Dan Thorne back past. What on earth was going on there? Perhaps just... I think just a matter of misjudging the braking there. He's trying to defend from Wall from uh, Dylan behind. Just Thorne going slower than he expects and just the slightest tap in the back of these cars is enough to send him round. They're powerful and rear wheel drive. And Lambert on Odell. Oh, bit of a contact between just the two. Just about makes it through. God dear, oh dear. Lambert and Odell, you cannot separate them on track at the moment. Incidentally, great showing from Lambert as well. His pace has been somewhat off that of the front runners um, so far in the season. He hasn't appeared for a couple of rounds either. So nice to see him make a return into the championship and also so competitively as well. But running in third position with Odell close in tow behind him fourth Odell moment there. very squirrely out of there then uh, through the right hand that we mentioned is flat out but on full loads of fuel perhaps it isn't uh, I think it should be for them but uh, Lambert he had a podium earlier in the season the second race at Hidden Valley albeit he inherited after Price Harper was punted off but he's showing good pace here he's kept his nose clean for the most part and Emma and Odell have managed to make a break from the immediately chasing pack, I don't think they'll catch the cars. Ooh, that's in front. April Dillon going round round. From fifth down into seventh place or so. Manages to get things running, keeps the engine going as well, uh, and gets things back facing the right way and looks to go on towards the grey stuff once again. So down into 10th, 11th position as Tom Kowalski flies past and just in front of her teammate Rob Covey then. A shame for Dylan who was running so strongly. Meanwhile, Battle rejoined at Mill at the third place for the final podium. Odell just seems to have lost some, he was definitely quicker a couple of laps ago, but Lambert seems to have caught up and they're running at roughly the same pace, so it's going to be a brave move for Odell to get past, or a, potentially a mistake from Lambert, or hopefully it won't be resolved that way. But Odell, you can see, very close, he'll have a run down the back, down the pit straight if he's, if he's canny about it. Yeah, it looks to make the move. He's got a great exit. Oh, they're both, both. both synchronised, spinning out of the final corner. Oh, dear, Odell came off worse there as well. And just too early on the power for the power driver, uh, which is ironic enough, if you ask me, <laughs> <laughs> coming out of there. Oh, dear, just too eager with those 600 horsepowers going to the rear wheel and loses a great amount of time over uh, James Lambert, who had a very big spin. Let's have a look then. And that's Dylan it's going off. That's the instant oh, we saw. to the grass and you no know, saving it from there. Yeah, and we saw when the two of them went round, Lambert had a terrific save, somewhat overshadowed by Odell not having such a good save immediately behind. And just both of them, out, just a little too eager on the power. Uh, and meanwhile, we've got a Q still far behind Dan. Is that Dan Foran? It is Dan Foran. Uh, that Q looks a bit bigger in the first shot. Uh, it's drop, drop behind Wallace somewhere. Yeah, Dan, Th Dan Thorne's pace has um, subsided somewhat. He was running so strongly earlier on in the stages of the race, but lap 5 out of 16 we're now on. Um, and Dan Thorne's pace wavering slightly under pressure from Harrison, who of course started in third position on the grid, so he's definitely got some pace behind him, and he's on the recovery drive following an incident um, at Turn 1, which really cast him down the order. Um, and he's got a great exit out of there as Dan Thorne spins up the rears once again. Campbell Wallace just ahead as well, so... 
It's just a matter of time, it would appear, for Lee Harrison to get ahead of Dan Thorne. Into the right hand, they go very, very deep on the brace. Does Harrison go? Or is that Dan Thorne breaking early? You mentioned, of course, that Campbell Wallace was caught out earlier by Dan Thorne on the brace. He's breaking suspiciously early. Maybe not happy with the balance of his car. Um, very, very possibly. Harrison, of course, qualified third. He's one of the fastest guys in the field. Uh, be wanting to get past forward as quickly as possible so he can have a run potentially to podium place if he managed to go quite fast enough for long enough but Dan Foran will not be easy to overtake ahead he's proved that on many occasions both in this season and previous seasons oh Wallace running out right ahead into the gravel doesn't lose a position, or does he? Well, maybe he does. Dan Thorne looking up the inside. Surely he's going to have better, a better exit. No, he doesn't. Wallace's tyres, I thought, would be coming. Chris Harrison up. right down the inside of Dan Thorne, and does he oh. make it stick? He should have the inside for the final corner. Will Glenn he get the Thorne traction, though, run. on the inside line? Yes, he will. So then, Dan Thorne demoted down to ninth place. Lee Harrison up into eighth, who's now looking to get ahead of Campbell Wallace for the Kaibitsu Racing Team. He's in the slipstream now, coming down the main straight and heading towards turn one of Brabham. Look at these three battling for the lower points positions. Oh dear, oh dear. Dan Thor manages to get things all crossed up under braking. Harrison, though, punting. Uh, Campbell Wallace, bit of a lap tap between those two. Harrison into the wall very briefly. That loses on him a lot of momentum and allows Dan Thor to get ahead. So all of that hard work undone by such a simple mistake from Harrison. And he's back down now into ninth position. Yeah, he's uh, all getting a little bit close there. And uh, just. Harrison just a little unfortunate to lose out. He was tapping Wallace, see if he could just put him off his line. And, uh, just ends up punting himself into the barrier there. And, but he's got past Dan Thorne very quickly to go in the attack again. Not really feasible in turn <laughs> six, but he's very close <laughs> to making this. it work. What a move this could be. Fantastic. Around the outside of Campbell Wallace. Will he manage to pull it off? Wallace will have the inside line for the next corner. Oh, Ooh, Harrison, a bit of a punch between the two. Goodness this gracious, could it's Touring. to get both of them at this rate. Goodness gracious, it's Touring Car Racing all over again. Chops Dan Thornton's nose off. He goes very unsighted in towards the corner there. And now heading towards turns 11 and 12. Surely Harrison's not going to think about an overtake. They are side by side, though. Look at this coming down towards turn 11 and 12. Surely not. Through here. Oh. oh my goodness gracious me, he takes the inside line. How are they not touching? This is fantastic driving between the two. Demonstrating their skill. Harrison still in the slipstream of Wallace. Coming down then towards Ascari of turn 13. Wallace goes defensive. Harrison goes towards the outside. Is he going to be able to make the move stick? No, he's not. Campbell Wallace punts him wide and manages to use all the road and submission. shouldn't. Dan Thor getting a bit crossed up there. I've got no voice left. And goodness <laughs> gracious me. Oh, what a... What drama between these guys in the field. It's like they're battling for a championship. It's unbelievable. Well, this is allowed April Dillon. It's now a four-way train. Well, I think it's more these three are holding each other up with the constant battling. Dillon's caught them up very quickly indeed. Dillon always does have good Covey's, pace, Co though. Covey's coming up as well. Uh, and Kowalski and Davies behind. It's coming out of a train of cars at this rate. Uh, these four battling so hard and April Dillon having a look at Dan Thorne. I think just a little too far to make the move stick, but we'll see in the next shot. And, and also keeps Harrison. Place. And ahead, yep, Harrison challenging. Wallace goes defensive. But, but Harrison really looks up the inside in towards turn three. Not quite close enough there. They're under braking. It's a bit of a lock up in the background of the shot. Uh, Dan Thorne still managing to defend from April Dillon through the, the left hander they go and in towards the right of turn five then it's very much as it was at the start of the lap so far but Campbell Wallace it literally is probably only a matter of time his uh, pace at the moment is somewhat waning goes a bit wide in towards turn six and seven uh, but Dan Thorne there still under pressure from April Dillon the number 315 who's been so strong at the moment is currently sitting in third position in the championship well, in her rookie season Harrison through here and as it is, it should get it done there. I doubt Wallace will have the drive out from that corner to have a run into the chicane. And Harrison's looked so much quicker at this stage of the race, he should be able to pull away if he doesn't make any mistakes. I think Dylan will be thinking the same thing about passing Dan Thorne. Just needs to get through, but of course, Dan Thorne keeps up a very robust defensive driver in this race. Uh, and indeed, throughout the races, but he runs wide into the gravel. I'll get Dylan past, no problem at all. Just misses the barrier there. He's very lucky to hold on to that. Very, very lucky to hold on to that. 
Um, he's unbelievable he didn't lose it. Pete Walker also in the background of the shot. So Dan Thorne rolling back down the order, unfortunately. Halfway through the race, you'd have thought these guys were battling for the win on the last lap at the moment. It's fantastic driving. Let's have a look at the replay then of Dan Thorne going wide. Threw it through the left hander, tried to go oh, right. Understeer oh, understeer. Just dear. never really hit the apex, and that was all it took. Send him into the gravel. There's no of the, none of these big, generous tarmac runoff areas in this track. It's all gravel all the way. And Walker getting very close to the four and ahead. You know, fancy a look next. If, uh, Dan Front has read as much time looking in his mirrors as an his windscreen in this race. <laughs> he probably has done. So Pete Walker there currently in 11th place. So the final uh, top 10 position is what Dan Thorne is currently holding, but not for long by the looks of things. Pete Walker in the slit stream heading down then towards turn three. He's not quite close enough, or is he? Launches one up the inside. That's a late lunge if he can pull it off. Dan Thorne though squares off the apex, goes a bit deep. And uh, Dan, Th uh, Dan Thorne does manage to carry on maintaining the position. Uh, but needless to say, Walker has got so much better traction through there into turn five. They go. And he's really on the bumper of him now, coming down towards turn six. Oh, my goodness gracious me. It's fantastic drama between this lot breaking then into turn six and seven. Walker almost all over the gearbox of Dan Thorne, the independent driver, heading backwards down the field. Unfortunate for him. Needless to say, if he can carry things on, he'll pick up a couple of points still, which will be a well-deserved achievement. Walker on the inside. This is what he needs to do. He just needs to keep it as close as possible through five, six, and seven. There's not really a move on there. Well, that's Wallace has spun in the background. It's already a move through for six, five, six, and seven, but you just keep as close as you can because there is a move potentially on into turn nine. And Walker just absolutely textbook for that part of the track. Dan will, we will, Dan will want you to fight back as quickly as possible. Walker was a little wise in the first part of the chicane, but makes the second apex. Goes into the drafts a little bit, but he should be okay from there. So let's have a look then. Lap 9 out of 16 we're on now, coming down towards turn 13 of Ascari. On board at the moment with Dan Thorpe. P. Walker goes deep into there. And that allows Dan Thorpe to get side by side heading towards turn 14 of Stewart. And launches one up the inside. Surely it's easy Trey. No, it's not. Oh, P. Walker manages to gloriously defend his position. Heading into the final uh, couple of corners of Pross into turn 15. Dan Thorne all over the rear bumper of P. Walker once again. But Walker manages to defend his position currently. And heading into the uh, part of the lap where we saw drivers, of course, spinning up the rear tyres. So easy to do through the final turn 16. Uh, but they don't manage to uh, spin up their rear tyres and needless to say uh, Pete Walker defends his position from Dan Thorne once again but needless uh, sorry I should say it's a great uh, a great race from Dan Thorne nice to see him mixing in with the action uh, but Meanwhile. Sam Hirani <laughs> yes we haven't mentioned this guy for a while have we Sam Hirani who is easily out in front lap 9 out of 16 he's on and comfortably ahead of his teammates and indeed the rest of the field look at him how far he is ahead if you see uh, whereabouts Dan Thorne and of course Pete Walker are at the moment they're probably only just about coming through turns five and six maybe seven um, whilst um, Sam Harani is starting a new lap then. Yeah Harani's got this perfectly under control he's got a very comfortable lead over his teammates. Not even in the same he, shot. Oh uh, exactly he'll just be keeping it steady don't make any unnecessary mistakes and if you can just do that and not get a trip up over anyone. Of course, we'll be coming up towards lapping. You see Co um, Hazelton in the background there, a lapped car. You don't want, you want a nice, comfortable cushion so you can deal with traffic if you need to. And Harani's got that and looking well on for this win. If you can just keep going. Price Harper, likewise, he's pulled out a good enough gap over Lambert and Odell, who I think are still battling over third place. So we haven't seen it for a couple of laps. Uh, He'll likewise just be controlling the race. Second place would be probably be enough to get, put him very close to Dylan behind. And uh, Harrison looking to make good progress. He's still in seventh place, chasing down. I think that's Morley up ahead. Morley, another driver, has really kept out of trouble. Uh, not necessarily the fastest, but he's made, had a very, very good race. Certainly has done. On board then with Lee Harrison at the moment, the number seven. Seventh in the race, coincidentally, as well, coming down towards the first chicane. Oh, Morley spun he ahead. Has indeed, you caught that better than I did. One by 149, spins down the order, was in sixth place, and going down into seventh then, and eighth indeed, as I believe that's April Dillon rocketing past as well, and now ninth as Pete Walker just gets ahead. So unfortunate for there, Morley. Let's have a look, maybe we can get a replay. We can indeed. So there we are, Dave Morley. Is it a clip of the grass, maybe, or just too deep? Oh.
Oh, it's just locked. Lock the rear. Locks the rear brakes. Yeah, locks the rear yeah. brakes going into there. So easy to do that, especially the rate that these cars decelerate, and you have to change down the box. Um, drives no all too well. There's Wallace in locked into back with a battle uh, of Dan Thorne and Kowalski, not too far behind as well. Through the left hander they go and heading towards turn five once more. Six laps now remain of the Grand Prix, and Wallace is really making inroads into Dan Thorne. Kowalski, like we mentioned, not too far behind also, so you can pick up the pieces if these two have a bit of a coming together. Yeah, that's from Kowalski is looking to pick up the pieces of this. Uh, Wallace and Thorne again locks in battle. They seem to have been around each other all race, uh, through between one thing and another. Kowalski having a very good run. He's running solidly in the points, which he hasn't really managed so far this season. He'll just... Another driver is looking to keep things going. Yeah, they're coming up towards Morley as well, and I think they'll probably be faster than him at this stage. So they'll all be looking, uh, potentially picking up decent points here because the smaller field means that they can do just that. On board then with Wallace in his Kaibitsu Holden, I believe it is in front, just behind rather, is Dan Thorne, uh, sorry, just in front rather, is Dan Thorne's Holden. So there we are, the Holdens are battling together. Look at this, coming into Ascari once again. He's up the inside, he's Dan Thorne, he went deep on the brakes. And um, Wallace then gets up the inside, manages to get the position. Dan Thorne trying not to take things lying down, but he's not going to be able to have the line. Or is he, because Wallace went a bit wide through there, but manages to defend his position very well. And Campbell Wallace then up into the top 10, a bit wide through, out of the end of Prost. Um, but nowhere to get through for Dan Thorne. So Wallace comfortably up into 10th place, it would look now, unless Dan Thorne can manage to make some inroads on the straight. Well, we've seen these two be locked in battle before, so you wouldn't be wanting to rule Dan Thorne out of this. And indeed, he's going for the inside. Oh, but Wallace just shuts the door a bit wide out of the turn two there, but manages to keep things pointing in the right direction. Thankfully, four laps now remain of the Grand Prix. My goodness gracious me. this very quickly. It certainly has flown by action throughout the field. It's not just about what happens up front in this championship. Further down the order, the battles can be just as entertaining and often are entertaining as well. No, not for the first time this season we found the leaders being pretty much ignored in favour of the battles <laughs> going on in the midfield behind. Uh, just a shout to Tom Kowalski, who we're looking at at the moment as well, comfortably up in 12th place. Uh, the gap between himself and Brooks in 13th is quite marginal. Uh, so it's a good showing from Kowalski, who's certainly got some pace is very close behind uh, Dan Thorne, so Dan Thorne could be relegated to just scoring one point at the moment. Um, so very interesting to see how things progress there. But Kowalski, he's had a bit of a torrid debut in the uh, championship so far, uh, but is comfortably uh, comfortable with his pace and looks to be at one with the car at the moment, which is great to see for the team Atom driver. Walker and Morley just ahead. Morley seemingly struggling with the pace. Now he's fallen to the chasing pack after that spin. Uh, he was running so, so well. It's a great shame he had that spin there. And, oh, he's just, he just doesn't have to drive coming out of the hair, can just lack the speed. And that allows Walker through before he even gets turn 13. Walker just so much faster in that part of the circus at that time. Yeah, Walker's certainly got some pace. We saw Whoa, that. Oh, big slide there <laughs> coming out of the corner. Perhaps a bit of showboating or maybe just a bit too early on the power. I'll go with the latter. On I think the latter, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, but Dave Morley, to credit where it's due, though, he's still having a very good run. Uh, but Campbell Wallace still not too far behind, actually. Sam Harani's gap then to James Price Harper, 20 seconds. Incidentally, Price Harper's gap to James Lambert, also 20 seconds. Fantastic amount of time through there. Um, and down towards the end of the top 10, Pete Walker in 8th we were looking at uh, Dave Molly in ninth, Campbell Wallace in 10th, who's a minute and 21 seconds uh, behind the leading group of this lot. Um, so I would say with a few more laps, they'd probably be coming up to lap these guys, but I don't think that's going to happen um, with this 30-minute race at the moment. No, it's a long lap, and of course, this being the two 30-minute races, it's a reverse grid pole to play for. It's currently in the hands of Walker in 8th place, who would if it finished now, find himself on pole. He's just pulling away from Morley, who's starting to fall into the clutches of Wallace and Thorne behind. Uh, he'd be wanting to step in the flow, as it were, and Wallace would want to pass to try and challenge for the reverse grid pole, which could be so, so valuable, potentially a big result if any of these guys can get it. And Morley spins at turn six, just as he to get on the inside of the inside curve, and that was enough to send the background. Kowalski just misses him. 
That was very lucky for Kowalski to miss him there because they could be both trundling back to the pit lane with some major damage, uh, but nothing done, I don't believe, just a bit of uh, gravel on the tyres. Let's have a look at the incident then from Kowalski's point of view. Um, and Ooh, look just at too this. late in the break. Oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. I bet they've been having kittens in there, probably Morley as well for that matter. Uh, but uh, let's have a look then. The battle for third position still ensues onwards. We um, cut away from it earlier on and we resume the action with three laps now remaining. Lambert still holds up third place. Alex O'Dell in fourth. That's Ben Hamilton in the background of the shot, who's a lap down, I believe, on the proceedings. Um, or is he indeed? That'd be yeah, he, he will be, because uh, he... Uh, uh, Mark came up as around 15 from the last oh, position wide, display. Uh, Odell, again, faster at this stage of the race. Oh, Lambert has grass. kept it clean. And, but Odell seems to be so much faster at this stage. Lambert's got a job in his hands to keep him behind. Just has, needs to keep it calm, not make any mistakes. No, no unnecessary spins. That would be the worst way to throw the podium away. Uh, Odell just needs to put the pressure on, hope for an opening somewhere. There are, you've seen time and again in this race that you can overtake in this track. He just needs to bide his time and wait for the opportunity. It's not really on where they are at turn six. Turn nine, a couple of corners down the road. It's the next big stop. Probably well, I was going to say, there. Odell got a very good exit out of there, and he was right up the bumper of James Lambert, then coming down in towards turn nine of Clark. Um, turns nine and ten, Lambert in fact. going defensive. Lake on the right-hand side. They won't be touching that at the moment. They are touching each other's bumpers. This is fantastic racing between the two. So James Lambert and Alex Odell going head-to-head -head for third position in the closing stages of this race. Odell up the inside, maybe in towards turn 11. I don't think he's going to have the drive or the track position at the moment. No, indeed, he does not. So Lambert Ring maintains uh, third position for a moment, if not just for a minute, because look at this, Odell up against the wall around the outside, heading in towards Ascari once again. Goodness gracious me, I can't, I can't comprehend the action that's going on between this lot. It is fantastic racing, maybe around the outside. I don't think he's going to have the traction out of there. And uh, Lambert manages to maintain his track position through the right hand, and they go. Oh dear, oh dear, Lambert is driving supremely well and his defensive um, actions cannot be taken into question. They are superb. He's positioning his car exactly where Odell does not want it to be. He Rather, his car was there so he could launch a move up the inside. Coming on to the straight again then for the 14th time for this lot. Uh, Harani comfortably out in front, over 40 seconds ahead of the third place duo at the moment. Odell going towards the outside as... Um, Lambert goes defensive into turns one and two, but he's got a great run out of there. Heading down the straight once more towards turn three. He's all over Dale, his all over him. Trying left and right. Is, you get, look, Lambert's got such good traction out of these slow cars. He's proving to be almost impossible to overtake at this stage. Uh, as Kobe going wide, getting out of the way. I think he's a lap down now. Uh, Odell just needs to try and force a mistake, force him wide, because that's all it will take, but Lambert driving absolutely perfectly, parking his car in the apex, getting good drive out the corners, and really that's all he needs to do, it doesn't matter that he's, even if he was four seconds a lap down the leaders, as long as he keeps Odell behind, and however he does it. Exactly, and you can see Odell absolutely pressing on with every intent uh, to get past, he's getting the the back side of the car out in pretty much every corner. These slow speed corners um, are so difficult to get the power down in these cars. Like we mentioned, 600 horsepower going to the rear wheels um, and pretty minimal downforce at that point before the aero kicks in on straights such as this. Um, and it's very easy to just spin up the rear wheels in second or third gear um, and spin the car out. But Lambert doing a superb job, as is Odell. But Odell ever closer through the, the left and the right hander of turns 11 and 12. Lambert's go defensive here. He certainly is and does indeed so. But uh, Odell all over his gearbox tries to send him a dummy up the outside doesn't manage to get the move stuck and um, Ooh, oh Lambert gets a bit that sideways could a chance. he certainly could do he's going to have the line in towards turn 15 but it isn't side on at the moment oh my goodness gracious me it's all kicking off with two laps now remaining Odell looking towards the outside they're side by side through there he's not going to have the track position as um, Lambert goes deep into the corner and uh, squares off his line once again, so the final podium position at the moment, it is cracking racing between these two. Yeah, Odell just needs to be a little bit more circumspect about his positioning there. There's no way through at the second to last corner. And in doing, trying to get force his way through, he didn't give himself a run where he could have had a go into turn one, they've just gone through. And he's still a couple of car lengths behind and run to turn three. Lambert will be quite comfortable, I think. Uh, he's good in the brakes, he's good in the power, and indeed he doesn't go defensive. Odell just he's faster he just needs to wait 
until and get close before the big braking zones because there are a few in this track but the second last corner was not one of them certainly is not so Lambert doing everything he can to defend from Alex O'Dell at the moment my goodness gracious me uh, if this is what the second race is going to be like I tell you what we're in for a cracking treat so do uh, join us for race two as well we're really looking forward to your company there an equally long race 16 laps and 30 minutes as well but into the closing stages of race one Sam Harani then starts the final laps for the um, offenders and offenders 1-2 currently uh, with who will be on the podium in third place and will it be the Tropico Motorsports car of James Lambert or will it be the man we're on board with at the moment Alex O'Dell for power in fourth currently it looks to be in Lambert's favour if he can manage to keep O'Dell behind him no he can't well I mean no he can't he might not be able to <laughs> onto the final lap my goodness yeah, yeah, Odell's got a very good run out of the chicane Lambert will need to go ultra defensive and even then Odell might have the traction around the outside so they go down into turn 13. Lambert was very defensive. Oh, Odell! Oh, big slide there. But he's got such, he's got the speed where he could still have a run into turn one if he's just quite through these final few corners of the lap as they go into lap 16 of 16. He's only got a few more chances left to get past. As Crawford goes wide, that allows Harrison through into around fifth position. Uh, not really seen much from either of them since they've got out of their respective battles, but. Nerds drivers have largely kept their noses clean after uh, some incidents at the start. Let's have a look then on board with Lee Harrison then. And Crawford just locked the brakes going into there. And so easy to do in these cars. Probably needs to move his brake bias a bit further rearward so that doesn't happen again. Uh, but the battle for third position on the, their final lap now ensues on. So for the final time they go through turns one and two and heading towards turn three. Odell driving with all his might and Lambert doing all he can to defend. In they go and Lambert has the line and manages to maintain the place at four the moment the Blake breaks glowing red the action is red hot as well because look at this is all over Lambert's bumper through turn five now they go um, and Odell has got a great run out of there maybe looking up the inside in towards turn six and seven of the chicane no Lambert defends the position once again goes a bit wide through there that allows Odell to get side by side now coming down towards the chicane of turns ten and nine and ten they're side by side coming down now and surely Odell's going to get the place if he goes off deep on the brakes that'll allow Lambert to get up but no he doesn't clips the apex very nicely Odell spins it round oh my goodness gracious me from third position Alex Odell spins it round but Samarani, the dominant race force, he takes the victory here down under at Albert Park. And the number one on his car and number one in the race as well. But uh, Alex O'Dell then, who's now currently got Tom Brooks for company as well. I think Tom absolutely, Brooks. absolutely devastating for O'Dell. He got the move done. It was a fantastic move as well. Round the outside of turn seven. Uh, not really the usual overtake is what we got down inside got alongside is able to make the brakes work and then he just got a little too eager on the power and spun himself around Price Harper there a good race for Cracking him podium Another for Price Harper the race. offenders lock out the 1-2 once again so their dominant force continues Alex O'Dell then is in fourth position and James Lambert will be rounding the way well, he's around the final corner now to take third Alex O'Dell will finish fourth and Lee Harrison then, who's got Tom Brooks, who's gone off of the final oh, corner. Spun. Goodness gracious me. He's put off. I think he's just put off by Tom Brooks ahead. And that allows Crawford back through into fifth place. Relegates Harrison to sixth. Let's have a look at the replay then. This James Lambert's incident with uh, Alex O'Dell. So look at that bit of contact between the two coming down towards the chicane. O'Dell going through there and he just lit up the rear tyres far too soon. There it is, too eager on the power. And that cemented third position for James Lambert. Here's the replay then of Harrison and his Brooks recovering from a spin and didn't there was no contact between the two but just No, he just just I think he just got spooked by the by the car on the outside and just put his foot down in the throttle and that was just enough to spin him round and give up fifth place right in the second to last So corner. the race results then uh, Sam Harani takes the victory 13 minutes and 49 seconds into the race duration another 20 points on the board uh, James Price Harper was second James Lambert in third Alex Adele fourth Neil Crawford finished fifth uh, Lee Harrison was sixth for the offenders after that penultimate corner incident um, and also a name we haven't mentioned Ollie Knight he's not racing uh, this weekend so he will obviously not be on the board and that will allow um, Harani's championship lead to increase the final guys who didn't score a point Ben Hazleton Tom Brooks Rob Covey and Matt Davies but for the championship then this allows uh, Sam Harani to increase his lead 155 points over Ollie Knight's 117 James Bryce Harper there is third on 78 with 81 points um, 
and April Dead are now down to fourth on 76 points. So it's all hotting up in the championship. Uh, Neil Crawford goes up to 13th position ahead of Campbell Wallace. They were the other time, uh, other way around uh, last time out at, um, of course, Adelaide as well. There you are. Thank you for that. Um, and then further down the order, the drivers yet to score a point. Constructors Championships, the offenders on the 136 points, um, just under, just over 101 points ahead then of Junior Motorsports in second place. Uh, Power Racing currently in third. Howler Racing in fourth. And the defenders in fifth position then. And drivers yet or teams yet to score a point. Fire Cruiser Racing Team and the Interceptors in 17th and last place. Let's start with the highlights then. Very messy start there. So I think it was Dylan jumped the start. Greek chaos behind. And the first few corners were just absolute cars. Just cars went everywhere. And we saw uh, the drivers who kept out of trouble there were the top four. The two offenders cars, Lambert and Odell and they ultimately locked out the top four positions and shout out to guys like Neil Crawf Crawford as well who managed to keep their noses clean after a messy first lap and got very good results as a result. And this battle on track of course Lee Harrison, uh, Dan Thorne and Campbell Wallace we talked about it for a large majority of the race no that's been taken away from Pete Walker as well who managed to get ahead of uh, um, Dan Thorne in the final. Reverse grid pole of course for Walker finishing Of course eighth. there we go so that could be interesting for the power driver um, and this one of course this was the all deciding incident for the podium position Alex O'Dell just two eager on the power and that allowed um, uh, that allowed Lee Harrison sorry uh, Lee Harrison James Lambert to take the final podium position but Sam Harani then uh, took the victory the number one for the offenders continues his dominant force in the championship hope you can join us for race two here at Albert Park in a few moments